Thinking about our reality is not something new. And I must admit, if this is a simulation, I like my simulation. What if everything you know, your life, your memories, your reality, is nothing but lines of code? Is this a simulation? The question about the nature of reality is tied to age-old philosophical thinking. This is not something new to ponder if we are living in some kind of matrix. From the shadows on the wall in Plato's cave, where reality and perception was measured up against each other, to French philosopher René Descartes, who 2,000 years later presented an evil deceiver who would manipulate our sensory experiences and feed us with those perceptions. Irish philosopher Bishop Berkeley, who coined the term subjective idealism, which basically means that what you perceive is real. And I think you can relate to that when you put on your goggles, that when you tap into that virtual world, you perceive it. So a population living in the matrix that perceive the reality of the simulation is therefore related to how we would see the world if the world around us would be simulated. But what is this simulation? So basically there is the hypothesis that was proposed in 2003 by Swedish philosopher Nick Bostrom. He published a paper and questioned if we are living in a simulation, proposing that there are three possibilities out of which one holds to be true. And number one is that advanced civilization never reach what we would call technological maturity. We basically go distinct before we build or enter a simulation. And number two would be that a post-human civilization run out of interest in creating ancestor simulations. We simply stop pushing technology. We do other things, like sit in awe or some kind of higher state of consciousness, or just amuse ourselves to death, as Neil Postman proposed with his book in 1984. Or, number three, progress is possible. How we have gone from Pong 1972 through me playing Commodore 64 into the virtual environments of the games that we have today. How we now can, through AI, create virtual, augmented, and mixed realities. Could that lead into millions and millions of people simulating their own reality? So we could create a simulation within a simulation. And this is something that philosopher David Chalmers has talked about, astrophysicists, Neil deGrasse Tyson, and also obviously Elon Musk, who stated that the chances of this reality being base reality is simply one in billions, saying that the likelihood of we living in a simulation is much more higher than that we do not live in a simulation. Which brings me um, to a night out in Vienna. About a year and a half ago, I just come from a conference and I realized that some colleagues from a company I'm involved with were out in Vienna. And we met in one of those quintessential bars surrounded by 12 quantum physicists, each with their own interpretation of quantum theory, some holding on to the Copenhagen interpretation where there is some kind of observer in play, others fancy the multi-world interpretation of Hugh Everett. And I challenged them with a simple question. Can you prove through quantum physics and mathematics that we are not living in a simulation? And it went all quiet. And I saw the minds working. And fast forward six months, my now co-author and good friend Florian Neukert calls me up late at night from the Silicon Valley Bay Area and say, Anders, I haven't slept in six months. This has now led to a publication on the topic titled Ex Machina, The God Experiment. We published a paper at first and then we moved into the book where we are exploring observations on the simulation hypothesis. Basically, we underline some kind of fundamental physics. And I will not speculate on astrophysics or cosmology, but entropy seems to be a present significant challenge. If we someday could 
you know, create a hierarchical simulation, what would that mean? So if we are to build a simulation within the simulation, within the simulation, or if we are in fact the ones that build it from scratch, as of now, it must be done quantum mechanically, as Richard Feynman pointed out. And nature might still know something about quantum physics that we have not yet figured out. And I will get back to this in upcoming episodes. So I will leave it with a, an observation, a very simple observation, that if we look at the advent of quantum technologies today, where we are now capable of manipulating individual atoms, the question of whether our universe is now a simulation or not becomes more than a philosophical pondering. Today, it is a thinking practice. It is something that we are physically starting to do. So we were gifted two opposable thumbs to create technologies that create progress for humanity. But it seems that we have an almost infinite capability to come up with better explanations. I believe that experienced progress is the heart of what it means to be a mensch, an active human being. And in the search of meaning or, you know, in the perceived reality lies the Lebendigkeit, this wonderful German word that cannot be translated into English. It is the vitality of life itself. It's where you give meaning to life. So whether we live in a simulation or not, it really doesn't matter as long as we have Lebendigkeit. Because no one can take away what it feels like for me sitting here and talking into the camera. This experience of my own experience to me is the foundation of our life. And we are now merging with technology. We are hacking biology and chemistry. We are wiring up our brains. And potentially, are we building some kind of super quantum computer that could simulate reality? And if we are, in fact, the first civilization or the last civilization creating a simulation, our challenge is to avoid what I have called the final narcissistic injury, to use a Freudian term, the loss of our own perception and the Lebendigkeit. And we find that in the Greek mythology, when Narcissus would stare into the water and the beauty of this creature would be reflected so perfectly in the water. But in a world without Lebendigkeit, the qualia, the conscious experience, the reflection will still be there. The light seems to be on, but there is no one home to perceive them. 60 years after Asimov's last question, we are now confronted with the doomed declaration of space and time. Space and time has had a good ride. We have various views of possible multiverses. We have scattered interpretations of quantum theory. And we have a world in which mathematics is now taken to the spiritual cathedral of many belief systems. Whatever we do, on this, what I call, wonderful journey to nowhere. There must always be room for experienced progress, for Lebendigkeit. And one more question. And if we're going to head into the simulation, the last one, please remember to leave the lights on. What do you think? Are we living in a simulation? Drop your comments below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like the content. And if you want to read more about the simulation and our reflections, our book Ex Machina is found under exmachinathebook.com, The God Experiment. Thank you for tuning in, and I'll see you next time.